Hi everyone. In all probability, the earliest hoiks were built on the North Sea around the 10th century, however, they did not become common in the Baltic until 400 years later. In the opinion of some researchers, they were technically the successor to the boat derived from raising the sides of a dugout. Other researchers, however, consider the hoik to have evolved from the early medieval plank boat. Though it resembled the cog from the technical standpoint, the hull of a hoik was clinker built in its entirety, and the steeply rising stem was rounded. The hull was built by the shell technique, and the gaps between the planks were corked with strips of animal hair and riveted. The deck, laid out transversely as on the cog, was supported on longitudinal beams. In the 15th century, hoiks had two and then three masts. An innovation was the use of a triangular latine sail on the rear mast, a borrowing from Mediterranean ships. By the turn of the 15th century the first three-masted merchantmen from southwest Europe, made their appearance in Baltic countries, principally in Gdarisk Bay. They had been set in motion by the Kerricks that sailed here from the west coast of France. Because of their characteristic flush planking, they became known as Carvels or Coravels, although they were quite different from the true Coravels of Spain and Portugal. The techniques of Karak construction were unknown to Baltic shipbuilders. Those of Gtarisk had to wait until 1470, when they were able to examine one of those carvel built hulls in detail. This happened after the Peter van Rossiel, a Karak or enormous proportions, had caught fire and had been abandoned by her French owner in the port of Gdarisk. The ship was taken over by the city authorities and put back into service around 1470. Now named Peter von Danzig, it functioned as a privateer, and was the contribution of Gdarisk to the Hanseatic League in its war against England. Some researchers believe that the refit of this Karak in Gdarisk was crucial in the acquisition by the local shipbuilders of this new technique. This fact should not be overestimated, however. It seems unlikely that even a close examination of a finished hull could ensure the successful application of the new technique without a knowledge of the intricacies of construction. This would have required many years of practical experiments which, so far as one can judge, were undertaken. Shipbuilding records do not make it clear whether early 16th century Baltic ships were carvel built. Conservative attitudes probably prevailed and most vessels continued to be built with clinker hulls. Other shipyards in northern Europe also attempted to build the new type of hull. Nevertheless, the pictorial evidence shows that even as late as the 17th century many North European shipyards were still using the shell technique to construct carvel hulls. The conversion of vessels into fighting ships is quite clear from images of cogs and hoiks. They have crenellated fore and stern axles, and similarly protected platforms on the masts. As the standard sea battle strategy at that time involved boarding, this was facilitated by special anchors at the end of chains cast from raised bowsprits onto the deck of the enemy vessel, and the hooked ends of the mainsail yard arms. When in the 15th century firearms first were used on ships, the first arquebuses and cannon were placed at the sides of the castles. It was not possible to accommodate what were quite heavy guns on the decks as they were made at that time. Deck structures had to be strengthened, something which was accomplished during the Renaissance. Thanks for watching.